Okay, I think what we're going to do today is look at an integral calculus application. And we're going to look at volumes of revolution from Butterbury Spell it, right? It's like a revolution. Okay, and I'm going to take the um, function y equals x squared, a very easy function we know everything about, from x equals 0 to x equals 4. And I draw it here like this, here's 0 to 4. And then what I'm going to do is rotate this thing around the x-axis, the x-axis here. And this creates this cone-like object, it is solid, it looks sort of like that, it looks like sort of like a loudspeaker maybe, and it's curved like this on the side, so it's not really a cone. So we have this object and we want to find the volume of this object. And one way we can do that is we can partition up the x-axis this x-axis and then we can cut through this just grab a slice like this we slice this thing up like this into little discs that is when we pull one out like we pull this ith one out okay we got a whole bunch of them like, like this with another one set them and when we pull the ith one out we end up with a disc that looks like And it has a thickness, T, and it has a radius, R. And if we, know, if we knew T and R, we could find the volume of that particular disk. And once we can find the volume of one, we can find them all. So the volume, sub I, we'll call it, since it's the ith one, here's the first one, second, et cetera, is going to be pi uh, R squared T. Okay. Now, we're going to put this in, in um, other variables other than r and t. We realize that t is really the thickness, or dx, okay? Uh, we have a, each one of these has a, a certain thickness, and we call that dx. So I'll call that dx, the change in x. That's how much it changes. And then r is my, how high this thing is. And I say, I say I'm doing this one right here from here to here, and this distance is just the y value, isn't it, at that particular x sub i. So we'll just call that, we'll now change, call this y sub i. Okay. So my volume sub i of that, this little disk is going to equal pi um, y sub i squared dx. There it is. Now we have, that's just the volume of one of these little disks. I have to add them all up. And the way we do this is with the definite integral because we end up with a Riemann sum, the special sum of products. And so we write it like this. We say that, we'll go over here for a second. Here. It's the integral from 0 to 4 of each one of these little v sub i's, which would be pi y squared dx. And there's our integral. Of course, we're integrating with respect to x, and we can't use y in here, but we know that y equals x squared, right? So x squared squared, of course, is x to the fourth. So it is, and I can factor out the pi. I'll bring the pi out here, and it becomes x to the fourth dx from 0 to 4. And that will give us the volume of this cone-like object. I, I presume that you know how to evaluate an integral like this. It goes to x to the fifth over five, evaluated from zero to four, and you end up with 1,024 pi over five cubic units, whatever the units are. Okay. Cube, the cubic units. That's about uh, 643 up into your calculator. 